Orchidaceae are perhaps better than any other family of flowering plants, as orchids represent the extreme specializations that are possible in nature. Orchids have a unique flower structure which consists of four main parts, one dorsal sepal at the top and two lateral sepals on each side, three petals, one in each side, and the lower lip, also called the labellum. The column and anther cap are the reproductive area of the flower. The orchid flower has the feminine and masculine organ of reproduction, fusing in only one body called a column, or genosternum. Orchids have many unique features which help the survival of their species. They produce masses of pollen, which improves the chance of pollination, very light seeds, which makes them easier to spread, and they can grow on other plants, using them to support their own growth. Orchids are very important plants to study, as their survival depends on a delicate balance within healthy ecosystems. All orchids rely on fungi and pollinators to complete their life cycles, so the survival of orchids in their natural habitat ensures that other plants, animals, insects, and microbes are still present. The absence of orchids in a once habitated area indicates that the entire ecosystem is endangered. Orchids are the largest family of flowering plants in the world. There are over 150 varieties of vanilla plants alone. In Australia, there are some 12,000 to 14,000 species of orchids in 192 genera, including many groups with unique features and remarkable specializations. Worldwide, however, there are around 28,000 species of orchids in 850 genera that have been identified as new to science. Due to their complex life histories, orchids are liable to be severely affected by habitat destruction, climate change, and unstable, often illegal and undocumented, harvest. There are approximately 200 species of North American orchids that are threatened because of habitat loss. And many more species of orchids from all around the world are threatened by illegal collections from the wild, because many species of orchids occur in just a few locations and removing them leads to the extinction of the entire species. Other orchids, especially ones that grow in grasslands, are losing out to agriculture, grazing, and development. The endangerment or extinction of orchids would devastate the rest of the ecosystem, as orchids are the indicators of health of the ecosystem, and their presence signifies that the ecosystem is vibrant and lively. We should aim to prevent orchid extinction by storing a genetically diverse representation of seed and mycorrhizal fungi, propagating suitable numbers of each of our threatened orchids for reintroduction, and reintroducing these species to protected public and private land where the appropriate vegetation, climate conditions, and pollinators are present. The most important plant foods to the indigenous Australians were roots, the underground parts of certain plants. Notably, the roots of orchids were important, as they were available all year to eat. The orchid, bulbine lily, sometimes occurs in great spreads across the Australian landscape, and the edible underground bulb of the orchid is quite large, 
walnut-sized and would have been worth the effort of digging up. Today, in modern Australia, most people appreciate the aesthetic value of orchids, and they are referred to as our wild flowers, and anyone would be reluctant to dig up the root and sacrifice the beautiful flower. The orchid is essential to groups such as the people of the southern tableland regions, as they flower in the spring, showing the start of the season of plenty, where many more plants and animals were available to eat, such as fish, which were essential to the Aboriginal diet. But even after the orchid flowers died off in the winter, they were still a largely available food source. Orchids have lots of economic value for a variety of reasons. They are distributed over the entire world, except for Antarctica, and the world trade in floricultural products is estimated to be worth $4.3 billion per annum, and to be growing at an annual rate of 4 to 6 percent. The main economic importance of the orchid in the flower industry is as ornamentals and long-lasting cut flowers. The species Vanilla Plantolia has been long cultivated for the aromatic flavor of its pods, the vanilla beans, and the tubers of many species of orchids, such as Sartarium or the Vanda, are harvested as a food source and for their uses in medicine. Many orchids bear sweet-scented flowers so they are cultivated in greenhouses due to their high demand as compared to other flowers. Like most edible flowers, orchid blooms are rich in vitamin C, boosting your immune system and helping stave off infections. They are also rich in fiber and essential minerals like iron, calcium, and potassium. Moreover, they are excellent sources of antioxidants and phytochemicals. All orchid flowers and leaves are edible. Full blooms, stems, petals, and buds can be used in many dishes. Pseudobulbs and tubers are also edible, though they don't make their way into many cooking traditions. Vanilla beans are the only edible fruit of the orchid family. There are over 150 varieties of vanilla plants, and just like grapes that make wine, no two vanilla beans are the same in flavor, aroma, or color. Orchids also have many important uses in medicine all over the world. For example, the Vanda orchid, which grows in India, Sri Lanka, Northern Australia, and Southern China, is used as a curative to rheumatism. The Chinese are the oldest nation in the world to use orchids medicinally, and they continue to use orchids for medical purposes today, most commonly in the form of medicinal tea. Dried dendrobium is believed to possess medical properties that can help treat cancer, strengthen the immune system, and improve eyesight. The orchid species Dendrobium also treats boils, pimples, and other skin problems, and it is sometimes used as a tonic or aphrodisiac. The species Gastrodia elata treats vertigo, headaches, and cerebrovascular diseases. Beltilla is used for various types of bleeding conditions, like gastrointestinal bleeding, coughing blood, and hemorrhoids. There are 88 species of orchids with therapeutic potentials for the treatment of different diseases and ailments, like curing scorpion and snake bites, leukemia, eczema, tumors, diarrhea, earache, sexually transmitted diseases, dysentery, paralysis, acidity, cholera, and wounds. As well as these medical benefits, Orchids improve air quality and mental health. The presence of orchid plants helps relieve stress as it aids in maintaining peace of mind and relaxation.
It also counters depression and loneliness. Nurturing orchid plants diverts one's attention from overthinking, and giving care to orchid plants is a rewarding feeling when you see them flourish. Orchids are especially beneficial as they take in carbon dioxide during the day and release oxygen at night. They also clean up toxic fumes. In particular, the plant reliably absorbs xylene, toluene, and formaldehyde from the air, creating a healthy indoor environment. Orchids grow on every continent except for Antarctica. They are dated as far back as 500 BC in China, Greece, and Rome. In the 18th century, New World explorers found and carried orchid varieties back to their home nations. The Chinese word for orchids, Ian, has appeared in Chinese herbal medicine books for almost 4,000 years. The first reference found was made by Sheng Yang, Chinese emperor, when he gave some advice about the dendrobium's application in medical usage. In the Western Hemisphere, the oldest reference found was by Theophrastus, a pupil of Aristotle and a scholar considered by many as the father of botany. Around 300 BC, in a study entitled Inquiry into Plants, he mentioned the word Orchis to denote some of the orchids' terrestrial species which gave the origin to the name of the whole family, Orchidaceae. Some old Aztec inscriptions told about how the vanilla bean was used by their ancestors to flavor a drink made with coca. It was also used by the Mayans and later the Spanish conquerors who brought the vanilla bean to Europe in 1510. In 735, Carl von Lein, a Swedish botanist, established not only the first coherent identification of the plants, genus name followed by the specific name, but also the lines of development of the living organisms and the evolutionary laws. In his study, called Genera Plantarum, he used the word Orchidaceae, taken from Orchis, to designate the entire family of orchids. Those studies opened, later, the way to Darwin's studies. Orchids were probably hand-pollinated for the first time in 1799 by German botanist J.K. Rocher. The earliest description of orchid seedlings was by the British botanist R.A. Salisbury in a paper delivered 1802 and published in 1804. It was, however, until the end of the 19th century that the orchid seed germination remained a mystery. The French botanist Noel Bernard discovered the role of mycorrhiza in orchid seed germination. Methods for asymbiotic germination of orchid seeds were formulated by the American plant physiologist L. Knudsen. The genus Dendrobium was first formally described in 1799 by Olaf Schwartz, and the description was published in Nova Acta Regi Societalis Scientarium Upsid Celiaris. The name Dendrobium is derived from the ancient Greek words dendron, meaning tree, and bios, meaning life, referring to the epiphytic habit of most species. The species of orchid, Dendrobium bigibbum, commonly known as the Cooktown orchid, was first described by John Lindley in 1852. The history of the orchid's discovery goes hand in hand with the history of humanity, encompassing discovery and adventure, witchcraft and magic, symbolism and occultism, addiction and sacrifice, and lust and wealth. With the discovery of the orchid, much has been learned about rich culture and history, botany, the wider sciences, and the ecosystem as a whole and no other flower better encompasses love, beauty, refinement, and charm than the orchid.